So before I finish, I just want to do just talk a little bit about some of the products that people can buy that sit on top of uh, OpenZFS. Mm. There is so many of them out there. Um, and uh, when you get into the commercial distributions, what you get is support. And then usually the tools make it easier. Uh, hopefully you see that the stuff is pretty easy or they add additional features, something that um, is, uh, is, is additional to you, what you see there. Um, all of these except for NAPIT. Well, so NAPIT is a tool that sits on top of any distribution. It's a little GUI that sits on top. Um, they also, I think they sell the cluster. So um, being able to put this into a cluster framework so that you can run, you know, 24 seven operations with it um, takes it, you know, truly to that level of enterprise class storage. Um, all, uh, uh, Sonetto actually, Sonetto and Aerostore are pretty close to the same product. Um, I put them at the top of the list. They're my favorite. I'll, sh I'll show you them here in a second. Um, you know, coming in uh, close next is the FreeNAS, TrueNAS stuff. So the FreeNAS is an open source um, community product. Um, and TrueNAS is the commercial version of that. Um, and they sell it. Most of these, uh, well, a lot of these players will sell their, um, they found, you know, hardware configurations that work really well. Um, and they, they try not to support just anything. Um, and so they have, you know, very special hardware configurations that they like you to run their software on. So they only sell it bundled. Um, that's true with these, the TrueNAS too. Um, the OS Nexus actually is a ZFS on Linux distro, and that is just software. It's software only, um, and you can get that. It actually, one of the value adds that they add to that is Gluster. So you can have a, the possibility of scale out architecture, um, which is, is very interesting. Um, I put CloudBite in here. CloudBite is a, probably a work, more of a workgroup kind of solution, um, but it's it's also available. If you look at the OpenZFS.org website, the companies participating, um, it it just keeps growing. Every time I go there, I go there a couple of times a month, and I every time I go in there, there's more companies that are participating. Um, the one thing I I think the core team for OpenZFS hopes though is that people put back um, changes or fixes or things and uh, that that uh, you know that they find and I probably should have put this list in a different order as to the people that you know continue to put back code into the the open source um, open ZFS um, and and then I wanted to talk about some of the stealthy ones too there's a bunch of different enterprise storage vendors now that are using um, open ZFS, but not advertising it, not saying that they're using it underneath. It's not up to me to tell you, um, who they are, but, um, lots and lots of them. And, and that makes the, just the marketplace bigger for everybody. Um, there's a couple of people out there that are, are working on or have already, achieve like uh, Storant, I think is a, like a cloud provider for ZFS. And, and you can see how powerful that would be if you can do a ZFS send incremental to your cloud provider of your, uh, your uh, crown jewels, you know, or just the stuff that needs to have offsite storage um, instead of, you know, the, the way that a lot of people do it, which is, you know, roll it out on tape, put it in a box, send it to Iron Mountain. Um, really nice to be able to do ZFS send over secure channel. So um, a couple different cloud players. Um, before we go, I'm just going to show you a couple of these. Um, let me show you. So I'm going to show you the two products that I'm most familiar with, the Sonetto and the FreeNAS. Um, we'll start off by just looking at the dashboard on um, the Sonetto. Really nice um, analytics. It, it gets down into your hit, hit rates of your caches, which is very nice, what your memory looks like. Um, just show you a little bit here. I've already created a pool. Um, I have a pool called Big Pool. It consists of all these disks. Um, the thing I wanted to show on this is how easy 
sharing is. So I can take this, um, so I have a folder or data set here and I can set up snapshot, click, you know, I have all these different tabs here, new snapshot, click, give it a name, um, an NFS share. I can just, um, allow a new host. I can just say, um, 0 .0 0.0.0.0 read, write access, root, no add ready to go. Um, SIFs, same way, you know, allowed public access, share. Good, good, good to go. AFP, oh, I already turned that on. Um, it shows you, you know, on data, how you're going to access a, the AFP from either the Mac or a Linux client. Um, also have access controls, pretty nice here where I can change my ownership, but I can also, they have a list of all the different access controls. So, um, I can, you know, um, I can just click on one of these. You can't add, sorry, nobody can add a subdirectory. Um, so very, very nice, um, sets of, of access controls here. Oh, user group engineering can't, um, or, you know, this is, this is my set. So allow engineering and apply this to all files and subfolders. Very nice. Um, if I'm in big pool and I just want to create another um, data set, I'm going to call this maybe my shares or I, what did I call that other one? Hosts. Just to add it, add another folder. So sharing is very easy. These guys add um, some VMware interoperability. So they do have the VMware interop and then they also have the ability to, to um, load in local virtual machines. They also have a high availability product, a, a cluster product for um, uh, when you have two machines and, and want to have the high availability failover. So um, pretty cool tool. Now if we go over into FreeNAS, um, I do have some storage here. I was using this as my archive pool. Um, if I wanted to add new data sets, so I have um, storage already set up here at a new ZFS data set, call it, I like to call stuff Bob. I'll add a data set. And then I can take that data set and um, so I can take da this data set and turn on sharing with it. I can add an Apple share, add a Unix share, add a SIF share. Um, looks like I already have a SIF share. And just, you know, pretty easily add my, you know, give it a name, find the path and click on OK. Um, this one has Time Machine. Um, so does the Sonetto. Most of them do have the AFP. Um, loading up AFP manually on a, a Lumos distro, um, not incredibly easy. Um, but, uh, you know, here it's it's very easy. Um, this this one's um also has jails, the FreeBSD jails, and a lot of different plugins. Um, and this is again their free free version of their product. And then the TrueNAS is the commercial version. Um, so, so to uh, wrap up this boot camp, if you're still with me, the things you should have learned is about pools and data sets. You should know how to create those and manage those. Um, you should know some of the admin tasks of how to um, modify data sets or replace disks in a pool. You should know what hybrid storage is now and how you do that with ZFS, how, uh, what a scrub is and why or why not to do it. Um, you should know, understand snapshots and replication. Um, and know that there's other products out there that sit on top of ZFS and are available for purchase. Um, this class, actually, I typically uh, charge for this class and decided to give it away as my contribution to the community. Hopefully, if you are from a vendor and you're listening to this, you'll encourage your, ven uh, your company to put back into the community also. But I do have other classes for purchase. Um, I have the admin um, class that more uh, tools and techniques for problem solving, um, performance common bottlenecks, and some of the common tunables that you'd set. I think I go through like 10 of them in that class. Uh, then the architecture class on how to design a system 
and uh, then the sharing. Uh, the sharing class is really specifically around um, the Illumos base distributions. Um, I also have Solaris classes on demand. I'm going to slowly start putting these up in videos though. I'm going to start with services um, and kind of work my way through this. I do a Dtrace class that's Dtrace for sysadmins, not developers. It seems like the um, Dtrace that's out there isn't um, isn't targeted at system administrators. So I'll, I, mean, I think those are the two first ones I'm going to put up. So. Um, the other reason I'm giving this class away for free is that we're doing a lot more um, architectural design and consulting work. Um, so we have right now we have a special for a free one hour architectural analysis um, of your ZFS problem and make a recommendation as to what what you should do or where you should go with that. Uh, we also do consulting design um, in implementation run books and training. Um, and we also do teach classes for a number of the different um, OpenZFS vendors. So we have that going on too. Um, if you want to get it, if you have any questions, again, if you're at this point in this and you stayed all the way to the end, please send me your questions. If I didn't cover something or if I didn't explain it in uh good enough detail that you want that for you to understand it please let me know I'm happy to take your email I'm also almost always on Skype um, at Kately Co and then my website is kateleco.com thanks for your time